Dreamers of all ages, welcome to the Dueling Disney Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Andy Zomerman. And I am the other one of your hosts, Al Day. And we are so excited to bring one of my great friends on with us today. This is Stacy Graves. Hi, Stacy. Hi. I'm so glad you're here with us and sharing what you will share. Um, I think it's going to be a really exciting episode for so many people. But before we get to that, Al, how was your Disney week? It was good. Uh, before before we get to that, I just want to say that, uh, you know, at some point we should get my friends and my children because we seem to always have your friends and your children. But then I remember I don't it. have children or friends. You go for yeah. it. I'm I'm open. I'm ready. You just I have no children and I have no friends. So that makes it difficult. Um, I had a good Disney week. As a matter of fact, what is today? Today we're recording this on a Saturday. I was in New Orleans from oh, Monday through that. Thursday for a work conference thingy. Um, and I took a side trip from the conference that I was attending for lunch at Dookie Chase Restaurant, uh, which was uh, uh, founded and formed uh, by a wonderful woman named Leah Chase. Uh, I walked in and it's this very historic restaurant in New Orleans that has uh, pictures of uh, President Barack Obama and civil rights leaders who stayed there uh, during the civil rights era and all sorts of really cool stuff. And everybody was like, oh, this is the best fried chicken in Louisiana. And then I turned around and I saw, and you can see this picture on our Instagram, a, uh, uh, a picture of Tiana uh, uh, and Leah Chase, who's the uh, one of the inspirations for Tiana from The Princess and the Frog, uh, signed by the directors of uh, The uh, Princess and the Frog. And I didn't discover until I was in there that it was also, it was one of the inspirations for uh, The Princess and the Frog and Tiana's restaurant, which is also... Uh, uh, was announced uh, sort of the details of the Splash Mountain retape. Um, so I felt pretty cool about that with my ability to discover Disney greatness, uh, even when I'm just trying to find something to eat in New Orleans, Louisiana. So it was pretty cool. The food was mwah, maron. It was so good. I had red beans have, and rice. Did you have the you didn't had, have the fried chicken? I had red beans and rice, which comes with two pieces of fried chicken. Oh. Um, and uh, the, I love red beans and rice. I make it often myself. It's one of my favorite dishes that I make. Uh, and it was quite excellent. Uh, and the chicken was just amazing. Like I have, I have a thing where when people say their fried chicken is good, I don't believe them if it isn't better than the fried chicken I make myself. Um, it was so good, perfectly crispy and moist without being greasy, full of flavor. Oh, I just, Dookie Chase is the greatest. Oh my God. It was so good. I was literally sad when I finished my meal. Um, it was <laughs> that good. It was tremendous. Wait, were you able to finish the whole thing or did you have to take some? No, time? that was the other thing is our longtime listeners know I have a very small stomach. So well, I have a very large stomach, which is why I got an operation. I have a very small stomach. Um, and uh, so I can only eat very little at one sitting. So I ate the entire bowl of red beans and rice, which is very, you know, big meal for me. Plus they gave me two pieces of chicken on the side that it comes with. And I was able to eat the leg. And then I had a, a thigh that just was, uh, I took back to my hotel room and ate it for breakfast the next morning. And it was just as good. It was so good. Perfect. Ugh, I love so cold good. fried chicken. Did you? Oh my God. I love cold fried chicken. Oh, it's so good. And I'm cold just, I want chicken. to go back. I would go back to New Orleans just to go to that restaurant. It was All so right. good. Good to know. All right, Stace, for your next big trip, maybe you guys should go to New Orleans <laughs> and eat all the food. <laughs> I don't recommend going when it's in the 90s and 90% humidity, which it was also yes. when I was there. But, you know, what are you going to do? I also went to Cafe Dumont and had uh, Cafe Olay and Beignets, and they have no relation. They only, only Actually, they do have a slight relation because Cafe Dumont coffee is served uh, at Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. And Brennan's Jazz Kitchen is based on a New Orleans restaurant that I didn't get right. a chance to go to. Uh, but the Cafe du Monde in, uh, in the French market was amazing. And those beignets, uh, friend and listener to the podcast and future guests on the podcast, Andrew Hua asked me if, if the beignets at Disneyland or at Cafe du Monde were better. Cafe du Monde, hands down. Yeah, you have to say that. I mean, so good. I don't know. I know what so that good. Is. So good. So that was my Disney week. How about the two of you? I don't know. I'm kind of hungry now. So maybe we should wrap this up and do it another Let's time. buy some plane tickets. We okay. can be in New Orleans by tomorrow morning. All right. Um, well, I let's talk to my daughter. So yeah, we all know she works at uh, Disney. And uh, just last week, she started working at D23. Totally excited about the fan club archive 
area. But um, she was able to tell me after starting there and going in person, she was able to tell me so much about where D23, the building, the offices actually is. And it's in the Grand Central Air Terminal. Um, in Los Angeles. So it's like right in Glendale, Burbank area, one of the first air terminals in California. Um, but it's also, this is what I got excited about. Um, if you watch Blackish and Grownish, um, it's the college campus. It's like, that's where oh, they found cool. her college campus and a lot of Blackish episodes are around there. And so she got to go into all like studios is right there. Um, um, all the different costuming is right there. So she got to go into a lot of different buildings and she's really liking the eight to five kind of gig working for Disney rather than the work at the parks work whenever all the time kind of thing. So I'm sure she'll have to work more once the D23 Expo is coming up. But for right now, she's enjoying the eight to five. Well, and I'm enjoying the D23 listening. Expo, she's going to be working for us since we will. Work <laughs> yeah, we'll tell her that. <laughs> I pay your salary <laughs> with my D23 membership fees. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. Um, but uh, anyway, so it's just kind of fun to hear some of the history um, that she's learning um, about the buildings and, I don't know, kind of a different fun side of Disney, the corporate side rather than the park side. I hope it pays more. Um, it does. It does nice. pay more. Yeah. Yeah. So she will have to work maybe just one job instead of three. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> So Stace, what about you? Tell us about your Disney week. Uh, this week I went on to Shutterfly and ordered all my Disney stuff from our trip. So two weeks worth of canvas prints and eight by tens and books and mugs. And cause I was, oh. when I was there, I was like, I kept looking at all this stuff there and I'm like, I, cause I wanted a mug, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I just want a picture of my family on the mug. <laughs> so I have, you know, a lot of other mugs. And so when we got back, I was like, okay. And we had a ride. Um, one of the captures, one of the photos that was captured on one of the rides was we were like our whole family that was there was in the entire car. So it's oh. just, it's like that never happens. There's always like other people or, you know, whatever. And it was just, there was 11 of us and we took the entire Splash Mountain car. So it's like, and all of our arms are up. It's like perfect. So I was very happy with that. So that was my Disney week. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good Disney week. And, um, and pretty soon I want to talk more about photos and things like that too. But um, I wanted to tell you all the reason that we invited Stacy. not Stacy has been a good friend of mine for how many years, Stace? I don't even know. Time. 20 years, like more than 20 more than that. Cause it was yeah. like the 90, like early nineties. Yeah. Um, I know time flies. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's when I was the adult and she was sort of the kid. And now I think she's actually surpassed me in <laughs> adult them. Um, that's no, funny. seriously, she really did. <laughs> you know, my older sister has that thing where like, she says, I, I am five years younger than her, but somehow when she says it, I'm older than her. I don't trust yeah. it. Yeah. Stacey surpassed me a long time ago in maturity. And oh, if now, we're talking maturity. Yeah. I mean, come on. Who are we kidding? So, and you'll get you host a Disney way. podcast for crying out loud. <laughs> well, Stacy is involved in so many things that we'll talk about also, I hope. Um, but uh, I'm going to let her tell her story. Uh, but the reason I say she surpassed me is because um, she got married, which I did as well. And she had kids, which I did as well. Only I stopped it too. And she kept going. And then she kept going. Yep. <laughs> and we all know no one can be know, considered an stop. adult unless they get married and have kids. <laughs> I'm just saying they surpass us in the adult. Them. They, you, you grow more in your adult area. You know, the no, adult I, things you do. Look, let's just be clear. Do I take that as an insult? Yes. But let's move on with the podcast. But Stacey has always been a Disney fan. I mean, yes, yes I remember talking. Yeah. So Stacy loves Disney and, and she has for a long time and now she's getting her family into it. So she did just mention that she took 11 people to Disney world, but, um, we'll get into that now. So Stace, here's what I'd like you to do. Okay. Tell our listeners and watchers now, cause we're on YouTube. Um, tell them about your family. Uh, my family. So I'm married, been married for like 14 years and we have five children. And we have, um, there's only seven years between the oldest and the youngest. So they were all like within 18 months, a new kid was 
there. I told you, I told you she was adulting better than we did. <laughs> so, so I have a 12 year old, a 10 year old, an eight year old, a six year old and a four year old. And, um, I think that just means she's more tired than both of us put together. That's a lot. That's a lot. Obviously not. She it's keeps having a... kids. <laughs> she, she obviously has to get awake some of the time. Yeah, it's it's it can be a lot, but it's a lot of fun. And so, especially with their, them so close, they're all you know they're they're just kind of all together all the time. And um, and then my mom lives with us, and then I have a brother and his wife and his um, stepdaughter. They all, we all went to Disney World for two, um, two full weeks and just went and um, had a great time in May. Did you, uh, refresh my memory, did you get an Airbnb or did you stay on property? So we did not stay on property. This was the first time I haven't stayed on property because we just wanted like a big kitchen for all of us and, you know, a private pool and, and so we did, we did get an Airbnb and I did miss being on property. So I was, but at the same time, it was okay for what it was. I mean, we got to just hang out at the house and have, you know, have it be really nice from that component. But, you know, there was no possible rope drop because we couldn't even get in. <laughs> so it was so it was 11 a people I, experience. Just getting, I know you just getting through the on property, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you can't even do it on property. So, but there was, so I just kind of had to let it go in my mind of like, we'll just get there around when it opens and that kind of stuff. And, and it was fine. It was fine for what it was. And my brother and his wife had never been, um, and their, her, his stepdaughter had never been. So, so it was for them, it was a huge deal still, but for me, I was like, what do you mean? You know, my <laughs> band doesn't charge. What do you mean? Like all these questions. I was like, what do you mean? I'm confused, but, but it was good. And the Airbnb was nice. And it was, it was nice to have it to be a little bit different, but yeah. And when we go in the future, we will probably stay back on property. Oh, that's good to know. Um, you guys did other stuff too, besides just the parks. Like you went to the beach, you went to Na- you, um, NASA, right? You went to, yes, we went to or- Clearwater. We drove over, um, two hours one way, but we just wanted to be in that beautiful ocean. Yeah. So we did that and we went to universal and we went to Kennedy space center. Um, and that's, and then we just had a couple of days at the house. No, that sounds great. That sounds great. Now, um, going with 11 people is a feat in itself. And we probably, could do a whole episode on what it's like to go with 11 people in general. And maybe we'll have you back on for part two. We we want to make sure that we had a a psychiatrist uh, to to help us sort of process what that's like and, you know, trauma specialist things. You know, that's funny because for like years, I've been thinking, I want to write this book called um, how to go to Disney world and be happy with your family on the way back. Oh, <laughs> you see so many people get I there and they're just, and you'd be in the fiction section. Happy. I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so. I would write the dystopian version. <laughs> I can't even get back with four. And I would write the version that's how, how to leave your family at home and go have a good time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I invited Stacy specifically because of her youngest daughter, Ashlyn. So Stacey, can you tell us about Ashlyn? Yes, Ashlyn is four um, and she was diagnosed at birth with Down syndrome. So we did not know um, that she had Down syndrome, but she was diagnosed um, right at birth. And we, prior to having Ashlyn, we had not known one person with Down syndrome. So it was the diagnosis was a shock. Um, and then figuring out how it was going to change her life was a shock. And it was a really, really difficult first, probably 18 months. Um, and you know, I had had five children right in a row. So I had all of these thoughts of how children were because my four first children are pretty much the same, um, physically and ability and that kind of stuff. And, Ashlyn was different. Um, and so I had to figure out, it was like, I was like a first time parent again. And, um, and then over time, about 18 months, it took us over time. And we always loved her, but it was, we were just in complete shock, um, which sounds strange and silly to say now, but it, it really was probably the biggest shock of my life, the diagnosis. And 
now, um, the last two and a half years that we've kind of, you know, processed it and, and gotten a lot of help and sought out a lot of families and sought out a lot of just other people who were raising kids with Down syndrome, who had siblings with Down syndrome. Um, we talked with a lot of families and we just came to the conclusion that this could be one of the greatest experiences of our life. And um, I remember one time I was um, at a medical office and I, the, I didn't have Ashlyn with me. I had my four other children, I think at the dentist and the dentist said, he said, do you have any concerns? And I had left Ashlyn at home. She was about a year at that time. And she was too young to come out. And, and I said, well, I'm concerned about my daughter with down syndrome. And he's jumped out of his chair and he said, you don't understand. You just won the lottery. And he said, my brother has down syndrome and it is the greatest impact on my life. And so kind of, that was kind of the turning point of, oh, maybe this really isn't as scary as we think. Maybe it's going to be a great thing. And and in the last two and a half years, we actually now tell our other kids as well of ourselves that Ashlyn doesn't have an extra chromosome. We are missing one because (laughs) we love her. So, I mean, she makes our entire family completely. And this is what other families had said to us, um, when we got our diagnosis that, um, you know, this, this, child is going to be a different experience for you, but it's not going to be a bad experience. And, um, and I remember I was talking to another mom that I had met who had adopted child with down syndrome. This is when Ashlyn was about a one years old. And she said to me, um, I said, why, why would you adopt a child with down syndrome? That's so strange to me because at that time I just, I just didn't like, I didn't like any of it. I didn't, I just didn't, I was so nervous about it and so scared. And and she said, well, you don't understand, Stacy. I had a sister who had Down syndrome growing up. And that, that child was the light for our family. And I couldn't imagine raising my family without a child with Down syndrome in it. That's how impactful my sister was on our family. And I was just like, really? I was so shocked. And then I, um, and then I went, this all kind of happened around that year and a half point. And then I went to hear um, Tim Schreiber, who's the president of Special Olympics. He was speaking at a Down syndrome convention and he said something. He said that, um, I mean, I, I don't know anything about the Kennedy family, but he said that his father, or no, it's not his father, but his, when John Kennedy gave the speech of, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, he said that that moment was only made possible because there was a child in the family that had had a disability and that their parents had raised this child and taught all the kids, you know, how how incredible and amazing these children can be. And I thought, you know, here's his, I think his title is the president of special Olympics. I'm I'm not quite sure, but he was speaking to us, to families with kids with down syndrome. And it just rocked me to my core that like, there's some pretty serious influential people out here and, you know, and they've all been impacted by these kids who are, are different and, um, and so it kind of switched all that happened all kind of within a few months of, of, of each other in my life. And it was, I just, it's something switched in me and it was just, there was no more fear and there was no more, um, you know, just concern. It was just excitement. And so from that point forward, it was just been, this is going to be a great thing and we're going to move forward and we're going to have a great time. And it's going to be so fun. And we are just going to go with what we've got. And we're just so excited. And so now we have the, we have five kids and um, four are atypical. And then Ashlyn has Down syndrome. And she is, it's just a really fun, exciting part of our family to have a child with specifically Down syndrome um, in it. That's awesome. So Al has something in common with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm that's why I like, I'm totally smiling as you're talking because I'm like, oh my God, that's so true. My little brother, Daniel, uh, also has Down syndrome. Um, and it was a big surprise when he was born. He was, I'm one of six. He was the, my mom's last, uh, child. And I, I remember it, it was, I was, oh, how, how much older am I? I think I was 12 or 13 when Daniel was born. Um, and I cannot imagine what life would be like without Daniel. It's just so, you know, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. 
Uh, I don't have a favorite brother or sister, but you know, Daniel, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, and I'm just so happy to hear you talk about sort of the, 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 the way that people perceive having someone with Downs in the family versus the way it actually is. You know, obviously for obvious reasons, it takes like a lot more care and concern and thoughtfulness, but at the same time, it's so much, you know, it just really does pull the family together in a really terrific way. Um, and I can't speak for others, but my experience and experience of most people I know is you just have like this, this, all this just love coming at you. Um, okay. And it's just so much fun to spend time and to hang out and to, to my brother, Daniel is, whew, how old is he now? I'm 52. So Daniel's four, 39 or 40, somewhere in there. Um, and it's just so much joy to spend time. And I, I don't, he lives in a group home now. Uh, my mom passed away about 20 years ago, but um, it's so much joy to spend time. And I'll put a picture of me and Daniel, we'll put it up on our Instagram, but um, just hearing you talk about it, it just so much reflects my own life experience and experience of my family of, and the, the experience of people really not getting like what a blessing it is and how much joy it brings to your life. Um, it's just really awesome. So I'm just really glad to hear your story because it, it's, it just makes me smile and miss my little brother um, <laughs> who I, I just got to see couple of months ago, last time I was in Merced, I didn't get to see him for a couple of years uh, during COVID because he lives in a group home. And so they were being very careful, which I totally supported. Uh, but I was really, I was really missing my brother, Daniel. So as soon as we were able to get, uh, get all the vaccines and show vaccination proof, we went, me and my other brother and sister went and visited with him just a couple months ago. So, um, uh, and we talk on the phone and FaceTime as much as we can. It's, so great to have someone with downs in your family that and it's a part i'm so glad you talked about it because people don't really I, I think if you don't have it it's hard to understand it but for mm -hmm. folks who've had the experience you're like yeah that, that totally makes sense so yeah i'm gonna uh just uh listen back to that part of the uh because the <laughs> uh, I, I don't i don't if our listeners know i don't really listen to this show yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And now you have that fun part to listen to. Yeah. Well, since you took the other kids to Disney before Ashlyn was born. Mm -hmm. Um, was this Ashlyn's first time at Disney? It was, uh, she was supposed to go. We had her first trip planned for March of 2020, mm -hmm. which that didn't work out so well. Didn't work out. Uh, park Did was something happened in March of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> park was still open, but her, her medical sensitivities just, it was, and we didn't know. And, so yeah, she was supposed to go, we were going uh, eight days at the park and a seven day cruise. And so it all Disney and um, just got, you know, we just canceled it. And so that was, so this is kind of the final, this time we just went to the, to Orlando. We didn't do a cruise, but we just, we finally got everyone there. It took, you know, a little bit over two years to get them there, but that, so that was her first time, but yeah, we've taken our other four kids to Disneyland and Disney world several times before. And so tell me about, tell me how that was. Cause you've taken your other kids to Disney world and, and what, how was Ashlyn's reaction different or was it the same as, as any other little kid you get there? Now I'm not saying all little kids are the same because some are totally terrified and overwhelmed <laughs> and some are like, Oh, you know, my kids some, were like every to some kids, Mickey's the greatest thing ever. And some kids it's a giant rat. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was her, how, what was her reaction to everything? Once you got there? Um, well, we were super excited. I'll send you some photos because she just like would raise her hands on every ride. Now she, we would, we would go on the ride and she would like raise her hand and put this big smile. And then when the, the ride actually went, she was <laughs> fully terrified like, and she doesn't speak so she kept signing all done like every and, and she was like and to her at home when she signs all done we are all done you know we yeah. whatever we're doing we stop well we're in the middle of like you know the raging rapids or something and she's all done and we're like well you, you can't she's like, we've got a few minutes yeah. the bar right and like she's all done she's she's leaving and so um and we you know it was we, my husband and I had a talk like, well, do we keep putting her on these rides? Cause she does get kind of scared. And we're like, well, we're a ride family. Sorry, kid. Like <laughs> got to figure it out. I can get on the ride. I mean, you know, she's not very tall, so she couldn't, there's several rides she couldn't ride. So right. we were like, 
if she can write it like legally and, you know, safely, then doesn't matter if she's afraid she's going. And so, and now <laughs> she is, um, she, she did, I mean, she was pretty scared on the rides, but she did, she loves, you know, she, now she lifts her arms up. That's her sign language for ride. So oh, she, perfect. she puts her arms up and I don't think that's the real sign language, but that's her little, like, <laughs> I want to go on a ride. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready. And, um, and so she reacted, um, it was very similar to, um, my other children, you know, some are scared. They're happy and scared all at the same time. She likes to see the photos of herself. Um, she thought that was great. And, um, and so that wasn't that different. The, the main difference with Ashlyn was this was the first time we ever had a disability pass and, um, or a DAS pass. I was going to ask you, so her pass is the same as it is the DAS pass, the DAS pass. So Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Did you, um, I'm sorry to interrupt this conversation, but I know with, um, some people getting the DAS passes, they have to actually call in advance and, um, make arrangements onto which rides they want to go on. Did you have to do that with Ashlyn's disability? Um, I wanted to do that. I called Disney, I think three times before our trip. And each time they said, this phone line is over five hour wait. And I waited and I never got through. And so I finally, when I was on, you know, because it's a specific, it's a very specific line. Mm -hmm. And when I was on the phone with, I called, you know, a couple other lines for a couple other reasons. And I just said, what, what do I do? I can't get through. And every person at, I talked to at Disney was like, nobody can get through. You're just going to have to come and get it when you get here. Ugh. And I didn't like that because I don't want to, first of all, I can't rope drop because I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> you know, so then I've got to get into the park and then I've got to wait in line. And so, yeah. and, the, and when we did that, the line did it, it was like 10 minutes. So it wasn't any problem, but I was, you know, worried it was going to be two hours or something. And, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't, it was very fast, but no, we, um, we got just a desk pass. Um, but I do. I have heard, uh, and I was trying to get information from Disney and they, they weren't very specific, but there are a lot of disabilities that you have to prove somehow, um, Mm. uh, to get it. Now I don't, we didn't have to do that, um, because this down syndrome is such a visual disability. And so, um, we just walked right in and they just gave it to us. They didn't even ask us any questions. I, I have a question in relation to that and feel free to share as much or as little as, as you want to about this, but I know with my brother and with a lot of folks with down syndrome, it comes with a, with some co-occurring disabilities. So for example, mm-hmm. my brother, Daniel has, uh, w- was born with some pretty significant heart issues as well. And I haven't been able to, to take him. Um, and that's largely for a lot of reasons, but one is I want to be sure about sort of his heart condition and, and the things he's able. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, folks can generally tell if, if someone has Down syndrome, but there's some invisible disabilities sometimes mm-hmm. that come along. And I, were, did you have to sort of not only deal with that piece, but some of the other piece, or were you not, did you not really have to deal with that? No, for, for our family, it was kind of interesting because out of the 11 of us, we actually had two disability passes. Um, right. a- uh, Ashland's was very, very easy, very clear, no questions asked, um, all accessible. Um, my brother's stepdaughter had, she has some growing thing in her heel and I don't know a lot about her condition, but it wasn't visible. And so we, she was worried, you know, that her, her uh, my brother and his wife were worried that they wouldn't give it to her, but they, they, she took a little bit longer and she had to explain, you know, what was going on. And they did get her a wheelchair because it does affect her that much. She can walk fine, but she can't walk long distances at any so they would just push her to the rides and then she could get up and get out of the wheelchair. But, um, so they did bring a doctor's note cause they were nervous. Um, because again, I said, I can't get through on the disability phone yeah. line. I don't, I don't think, I don't know anyone who can right now. Um, and so we knew we, we wouldn't know ahead of time. So she, and that's, um, I gotta that. say, that's a really difficult thing to navigate and negotiate. If mm-hmm. you're not sure until you get there. Like Disney's right. got to come up with a better way, maybe an a, a, a internet portal. I also know that over the years, people have had so much trouble. Disney specifically has had so much trouble with people sort of faking disabilities to, to get dealing, access. That's why this whole thing exists right. right now and is the way it is where you have to prove this and go all this because we can't have nice things because people didn't yeah. <laughs> obey the rules. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing though. Like I remember when we went 
Andy, with when you had to use a wheelchair, and one of the things about when you had to use a wheelchair, which is again something Stacy just mentioned, it wasn't that you couldn't walk at all; you just couldn't, you know, walk long distances. And so you got up to stretch your legs, and people were—I could tell people were looking at us super judgy because they're like, "Oh, they didn't really need the wheelchair." And I'm like, "But you know, there's so many disabilities folks have that aren't visible mm -hmm. that I, I just, I just have a really strong reaction to people who sort of make assumptions." around disabilities that aren't that that aren't visibly obvious right so it's just one of those things that i got to be honest i would be really reluctant to spend the amount of money it takes to take all those folks to to disney without some sort of clear idea yes. of what was going to happen when i got there with right. folks with disabilities right yeah, well, I was, I had two Facebook groups I was asking in, uh, I mean, I have all the Disney Facebook groups that I'm in, and then I have all the Down syndrome Facebook groups I'm in, and the Disney ones, you know, are much larger in general, and there was a, a lot of conversation about, um, you know, who is going to get a disability pass, and can you, and what you need for, and no one can really give me a straight answer, but in my Down syndrome Facebook groups, when every time I put it out there, every single parent was like, oh, yeah, you get one. No question. So I, I had the assurance of that through sure. knowing other other people who have taken children with Down syndrome. But, yeah, if there is an invisible disability or, you know, something that's not as obvious, I, it, I do think it is it's very difficult because Which, it's so expensive <laughs> to yeah. get there and not be able to, I mean, Ashlyn doesn't sweat. So in Orlando, oh, we was, can't, yeah. she has to be inside air conditioned or have, you know, we kind of have like a little portable air conditioning thing that we bring with us, but yeah. there is no, if she couldn't wait in line, if she had to wait in line, we would not do any rides. Yeah. You know, there's so many co-disabilities that it's really right. neat to folks with Down syndrome that you have to like, not knowing the details of the accommodations you're going to get makes it really difficult. Yeah, it, it does. How did she do with the characters? Oh, she loved them. She thought they were the greatest thing. And <laughs> Mickey or she, several characters came up to her. And of course we went to Tus Tusker house. So we, you know, it was character dining. And so there was, you know, they, they kept, I was a little nervous because we had signed up for it. I wasn't sure where the character with the whole COVID thing was. Um, but that, by the time we got there, they were full, you know, full like they used to be so um so that um one of them kept coming up to her it was either mickey or goofy and they just were they kept having her blow a kiss to them and they would grab it in the air and put it in their pocket and then she was like <laughs> looking in their pocket i mean it was just she thought it was like the greatest thing and she did not want them to leave and when they came out you know she could see them across the restaurant and it was just like they were she just was in love with them and they were um I felt, I don't know if this is true. It felt to me like they spent a little bit more time with her. Um, we had a lot of kids with us and, and it was just very sweet. I was very impressed by how the characters treated her um, because you, you just don't know, you know, and, and um, it felt very genuine. And I felt like it was one of those times when we were there at Disney, we did, didn't feel this at other parks we've been to, but when we were at Disney world, I honestly felt like this the what is what are the cast cast members that's what they're called right mm -hmm. the cast yeah. members anyone if they were like you know in character costume or whatever I felt like they Ashlyn did not have down syndrome like they just treated her like every other person that no one was afraid no one was resistant and it was just it was really it was really awesome like it was it was I was like oh we gotta come <laughs> like, just, it was really because we didn't feel that at other parks um but particularly at disney it was really a beautiful thing um how did the other kids are the other kids so used to this happening with the attention being paid to ashlyn um that they're kind of used to it is there jealousy is um i think sometimes there is a little jealousy honestly some one of my kids like just the other month was like, do you love Ashlyn the most? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> uh, no, I love all my kids hundred percent. Um, and so, you know, I think because, because I, her diagnosis is seen, I feel like there's no escape from it. So I share about it on social media. We talk about it with friends, you know, we're very, very, very open with it. With our other kids, we do have a child diagnosed with ADHD and we have a child diagnosed with anxiety and we have a child diagnosed with a verbal tick, but all of those, um, are really unseen. Yeah. So I don't, 
talk about it. Cause I'm like, this is your choice to share. You know, when Ashlyn will, will never have that choice. Everybody will know it all the time. And so, um, so they're used to it, but we do try and really make a big deal, um, for each kid, you know, just, just like any parent would. Um, but because there are some things whenever it, whenever Ashlyn is trying some things, like we have a little, I have a little cheat sheet that I made for kids. where like, you know, at three, they have to go in gymnastics. They have to learn, you know, all these things that they have to do. And of course I made it before I had a child with down syndrome. I'm like, she can't do any of these things. <laughs> so, but we've just kept at it, you know, but for her, you know, our other kids will pick up on, you know, how to do a somersault or how to ride a horse, you know, really quick. And Ashlyn, it takes a lot longer. And so there is a lot of time spent with her just to get a lot more of the basics down. Um, but we've really tried to give each of our kids like a, a real sense of what it is, you know, doing something that they love as well, that doesn't have anything to do with down syndrome. Mm. Um, so that they can kind of be their own. It's usually like a sport, you know, they can kind of be their own person in a, in a social setting without being known as the sibling of a child with down syndrome. So kind of, you know, because they're so acknowledged that way in our family. Yeah. I, I can say it's from my experience as a sibling, when I was a kid, I never really got mad at Daniel. I sometimes get mad at my parents, but Daniel yeah. was always sort of exempt from that piece because I felt so responsible for him. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was like a shared family responsibility. It wasn't like, Oh, you know, you, you know, you have to look out for Daniel because he's got needs that the rest of us don't. So we never really, uh, just as a sibling, when I was a kid, it just wasn't really directed to him. Now, my parents, I used to get annoyed at, but you know, that's because they made me take care of my three little brothers and from the time <laughs> I was 12. Um, right. so, you know, and that wasn't just Daniel, it was Dion and Joseph too. Um, so, it, you know, never really directed at him. I don't know if your kids are the same way, but I, I don't, I don't, uh, and I was a pretty awesome person. So I didn't really get jealous because of how wonderful I was. Oh, please. And, and <laughs> am currently. So, yeah. I don't know. What about, uh, we're talking about how happy Ashlyn is and, and was at Disney, but is she like other kids where she just totally had a meltdown? Like, was she just done? Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally had a meltdown. And it, it, it you know, <laughs> as a parent, so when my other kids have meltdowns, you know, I'm pretty much like, you know, they, they start getting consequences immediately. Cause I'm, I'm not, I don't like to put up with that. I'm not, I mean, I have five kids, so there's no, like, let's sit over and talk about it. It's like, you stop what you're doing <laughs> right now or you're leaving, you know, this is your option. I mean, we get on the plane to go to Orlando, which is what five and a half hours. And I look at all them. Um, and I'm like, okay, when this plane lands, if you're good, I'll buy you a candy or a treat or whatever. If you're not good, you don't get one. Leave me alone. I'm going to read my book, <laughs> you know, that's kind of how we, how we, how we parent. And so when we get to Disney world, you know, if they have a meltdown, we're pretty much like, you know, you get a consequence because we don't want to deal with the kid melting down with well, Ashlyn it is different because she doesn't have any comprehension of melt of consequences or, you know, just being in different scenarios or any of that stuff. Um, and so and when she has a meltdown, so she doesn't sweat, so she'll overheat. So, and then she'll turn bright red and then it can be like a 911 call for us. And so, um, so it's a little bit scarier because it becomes dangerous pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So if, if she has a meltdown, which we have, I have an entire, I had an entire bag, um, in a, we have a stroller that's like a wheelchair. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's a little bit bigger than most strollers and she's, she's big. She's four and a half. Um, so I had this whole thing of like, you know, with stuff we've just learned with her on how to help her meltdowns. And, and that's not usually what we do with our other kids. We usually immediately, you know, say you're, this is what you're going to miss out on if you keep losing your mind or whatever is going on. Um, but with Ashlyn, it's immediate, usually, um, like fruit snacks will calm her down almost immediately. And so, you know, have those and, um, with Ashlyn, for her not to overheat, we had to keep her hair wet the entire time. So I had all this water and I was like, don't drink it because I have to <laughs> use it to wet her hair. You know, <laughs> so, so we buy the cold water for the kids and, um, 
you know, the water started out cold, but by the end of the day, it wasn't. So, and we would just pour it on her head and she didn't really like that, but she could not get hot. And so and we'd keep her shirt wet or whatever, just to keep her cool, um, a little bit, but yeah, she definitely had meltdowns, but she would not have made it, um, in any line whatsoever. And so I am, you know, before I had that DAS pass, you know, it's like, oh man, all these people are, <laughs> you know, have these desk passes and I wish we had one, but we don't, it's okay. But then when I got it, I was like, no, literally we can't come if we don't have this because she cannot wait at all. She will overheat. Well, you know, or she'll, um, she has no, uh, personal space. And so like when she sees them with like a stranger with a mask, she'll pull it off them if she can reach them. So it's, you know, that's, I mean, nobody was wearing masks when we were in Orlando, but that's how she just, yeah, because said, COVID didn't hit Florida. I don't know if you heard. Right. Me. I know I didn't. Hit it. You don't I said, need we got COVID at Florida. <laughs> we, we came home with COVID, but, um, but I, don't yeah, know so, I know, I don't know how either we were masked for like every day for two years. And we were like, oh, well, we'll just go to Florida. Everybody else does. <laughs> come home and all eight of us, all 11 of us tested positive. So, um, But she, yeah, so she, she melts down, but it's, you know, my other kids, I try to, you know, we try to do that good parenting thing where you give attention to your kids when they're doing good things, not when they're melting down. And that was pretty effective with the first four. Um, But with Ashlyn, it doesn't work. So with Ashlyn, it's, it's once she starts melting down and it is an immediate find air conditioning, go uh, when you go um, to any of the parks and this is for everyone, not just any people with disability, but I honestly didn't know this before Ashlyn, every single service counter and every single quickie character, anything, any, anywhere there's food at Disney, if you ask for ice water, they have to give it to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know that. And so, and you can go on Cause I was like, well, what if I can't wait in line as I was talking to the, the Disney staff and they said, you just go up to the quick service and you just ask and they'll give it immediately. So we would just do that. And it would, could just cool her down or she could throw it on the ground, but it just gave her, you know, something that was cooler. Um, but that's something that we learned and that we did and it was easy and it was helpful. That's awesome. That's a- Can I ask you a, a question? Cause I know you mentioned that she's nonverbal, Daniel's nonverbal as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that just over that it's hard for people to understand, and I'm, I'm wondering how you feel about it is even though Daniel's largely nonverbal, he'll, he'll, he'll say no real clear, but, um, is that I still feel like we communicate with each other and it's really hard to explain. So I guess my question is when you all were at the park and, and sort of, uh, managing to sort of try and get through the day, how was she able to communicate to you when she needed something or wanted something? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we are the same way, which Ashley and I can have, I feel like we have full sentences because I know exactly what she wants. She uses sign language. Uh, she probably knows mm, maybe 40 sign languages. And then she has about 10 words that she speaks and she uses them very clearly in how she understands what's going on. She just doesn't have the muscles in her mouth to make the words. And so it's not that she doesn't understand. It's that she physically can't do it. And, um, she would, you know, she knows the sign first to eat and to drink and all done. And she knows again. And so all those, that's all sign language. So, you know, if she really liked something, you know, she would say again, again, <laughs> like Mickey, come back again, again. We're like, no, okay, Mickey's done. Mickey's at the other table, you know? And, um, and so, but she, you know, she loved all either. She's so, um, she's got so many sensory issues and, you know, mm-hmm. Disney is obviously overstimulating for a lot of kids. And she just really thrived on that. I mean, she was like, I got one of the drinks I can't remember what it's called, but it has like the little ice cube that's plastic and it glows. So yeah. it like lights up your drink Glowing cubes. Yeah. Yeah. The glow, it's just fun, you know? And I was like, Oh, I'll just, you know, I got it. And she just thought that was the greatest thing on the planet. And I, you know, and so she, she had a real easy time with all the stimulation and with communicating with us, mm-hmm. but there was no way, I mean, nobody else can understand her. And right. so, you know, no, no one else. I mean, even our friends who know her can't understand what she's saying or what yeah, she's It's definitely an in family thing where you're it like, is an in family yeah. thing very much. Yeah. So we communicate her with her very, and we can tell, um, pretty much what she needs all the time because she's asked us in her own way, but, she, but nobody else, even her words that she has, she's not clear with them. Right. So most people who hear her speak can't understand what she's saying. Um, but it's, um, 
but yeah, and it's funny because like, so, um, like she always uses words. And one of the funnest one, funniest ones is, um, my, we were getting, this is last winter. We were getting ready to go skiing as a family and she, we are going to put her on skis. We haven't yet all of our other kids ski. And, um, and I asked Michael, my husband, her dad, and I said, do you have your ski helmet? Um, cause he's, you know, part of a generation that didn't really have ski helmets and all everybody does. And he said, no. And Ashlyn picked up, looked at both of us and goes, Oh, <laughs> you know, and so it was like, she picked up on the conversation. She knew what we were talking about it. She knew it was not good. And she said the appropriate, you know, thing to it. And that's how she is with so many situations, but you have to be, you have to be right there to, you have to really know what she's trying to say. You have to be in tune. And once yes. you sort of are on that in wavelength, tune. yes, it, like you say, I've had full on conversations that a third party uh, if, who wasn't, who grew up in a different house would be like, I don't, how did you I know that? Right. Or, and yes. I'm like, oh no, that's just Daniel. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know what there's, I know what she's saying. It's no, it's no problem. So, and that's, I think one of the things, um, that we were so moved by Disney was, um, so there's kind of two type of parents of kids with down syndrome. There's probably more, but they kind of fall into categories of parents that fight for their kids and the parents that don't fight for their kids. And I fall strangely, oddly, surprisingly in a category that doesn't fight for inclusion. Um, it's completely overwhelming to me and it's so difficult and, you know, with everything, it's just, I have kind of this, I guess, belief that if someone doesn't want to include Ashlyn, I can't convince them to do it. And mm. so I'm just not even going to bother. And it's, it's not a, I'm not mad about it. It's just kind of, we, we've, we've come to the realization that this child has been one of the greatest gifts of our life and we yeah. can respect and appreciate if someone is not there. So, but we're not going to convince you to right. be where are you going to put your energy, right? You right, put your right. energy towards a losing battle. Exactly. So we just, I don't put any energy towards it at all. And so anything that we do with Ashlyn, I don't fight for her inclusion. So if people don't include her, we just leave, we just walk away, you know, whether it's, you know, we're someplace, I mean, what she, when she, how she goes to school, how she goes to therapy, if those people, I am not going to say, you have to do this. I am just going to say, okay, well, goodbye. <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't convince you to, you are not worth my time. I'm right. Yeah. And, and right. honestly, not disrespectfully, just kind of, that's how I realized that maybe I probably didn't include others, you know, and right. I, I understand. And so, but at Disney, I was like, sh I mean, we were, I felt so, it felt so inclusive, so completely. Like I didn't have to make an, a, an effort in the slightest way to give this girl a traditional, typical Disney trip. And I just like from everything that they did, I, cause we did not feel that at universal. Right. Um, we didn't feel that at some other places and no disrespect, but like I said, we just walk, you know, we're just like, okay, well you're in a different spot, have a really good time with all your atypical people. And <laughs> enjoy. It. Great. You know, good. This, it's wonderful. I'm sure for some, but it just didn't work for us. But for Disney, it was like, I mean, we, um, we were at some disability tent, the little, so around the parks, they have the blue tents. So the blue tents are the exact same as the disability headquarters. So if you, if the disability, like, so if you walk into the park and you want to get a DAS pass and it's got a long line or whatever, all you have to do is go to a blue, blue umbrella. And yeah. it's okay, same. Like the guest they have the same, yeah, they have yeah. the same, mm -hmm. but yeah. not all umbrellas, just the blue ones for disability. Oh, okay. And so, um, and so we were there for some reason. I can't remember because we'd already had her pass. Oh, so we so we had a we had her pass and we had all our Mickey bands. And I was putting it on the phone, the, you know, the next ride. Well, we went to the next ride and we went to get on it. And the like within the 10 minutes of us going from the beginning of the ride to getting to the ride, it broke down. Hmm. And so our our so we couldn't scan it that we went through it because oh, right. we, we never actually got to that, you know, we didn't get it with. And so we turned around and I couldn't get us to another ride because it was saying, no, you still already have a ride you have to go to. And so, um, so we went out 
to the, and we, and they had to reset it and they just did it. It was really, you know, it was pretty easy for them, but I couldn't do it. So I, we went out and we found a blue umbrella and I said that, you know, this is our situation. We're all supposed to go on this ride. It's broken down. We can't scan it. We can't get it, you know, to say we're available, we're ability, we have an ability to go to a next ride and we're standing there. And one of the, one of the guys comes over and he was pretty young. He comes over and he was like, you guys have been standing here for a long time. And I was like, well, eh, 10 minutes, not, you know, not long. It's fine. And he was like, I just feel like all you guys need some cotton candy. And he gave up <laughs> his cotton candy. And it was, you, you would think he was giving them gold because it was like, yeah. they were, you know, it was, they didn't have to ask mom to buy it. They didn't, you know, and it, was just, <laughs> and it was this huge bag. And so all the kids and like Ashlyn loved it. And it was something that was like, it didn't, there was no difference there when they were eating cotton candy. It was just, and you know, I don't know if he was aware of that or not, but I thought this is probably one of the only gifts that someone's just given to us in a situation like this for all five of our kids. It doesn't make any difference, you know, like that Ashlyn has Down syndrome or can't speak. They all just get to sit and enjoy the same candy. And it was just, so I was like, what a, I'm like crying. At, you know, I'm like, okay, don't cry. You're, you're at, at like the blue, you know, umbrella. Just, this is embarrassing, you know, but it was just like, oh, I just felt like, oh my gosh, we're being so taken care of. Like we, we have this, you know, these people who are just like resetting all of our DAS passes and all of our Mickey bands. And, you know, they've got my phone and they're just clearing it on the app. And then we go on another ride and someone else gives us the cotton candy. And it was like, for someone who doesn't fight for her kid or for her kid with Down syndrome, just because it's, it's too overwhelming to me. I felt like as a parent, I'm at this place where everybody else is fighting for my kid to have, in, to be included. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is, this really is magical because I don't have to do, like it allowed me to be a mom. Yeah. Instead and of, not have to set yourself up yes. for consistent disappointment. Constant. Yes. Maybe this will work out. Yeah. Right. Probably won't, but we're going to try. <laughs> and, so, and so it was just this like feeling of just, oh my gosh, we just get to enjoy this beautiful, amazing park. And it's almost like we don't even, like she doesn't even have a disability. Like it was that powerful. And it was like, we're just, you know, we just get a day where we're not that family with the kid with Down syndrome. We're just a family enjoying Disney. And it was real, like, it was really, really beautiful. I, it was one of the best trips I have ever been on that part when we were at the the Disney parks and it was hot. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is so hot. And, and we still, it, you know, we could just manage it and we could just, I don't know. It was just, I, we really enjoyed our time at the Disney parks way, even more than like, we've been a lot and we've been to Disneyland obviously more because we live in Washington or, you know, in Vancouver. So, um, but it was just, you know, before they were really fun and it was still really fun, but I think this time it was seen how just inclusion when I, I had to do anything to force it. It was just natural. And it was just, um, it was, it was really a, a blessed experience, honestly, to be there. It was great. You just gave like, there could not be a better commercial for Disney <laughs> for a kid with special needs than what she just said. So yeah, I mean, it, was, <laughs> it, it was, it was really just, I, 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 I didn't know what to expect. I have very low expectations when we take our family on things. And I just, I, I, yeah, it was, it really felt like this was, um, something that I'm honestly, I thought it was worth the money. <laughs> that that's the your commercial <laughs> because it was a lot of money so yeah don't get me it wrong really there. Is. it, wasn't it really cheap, is <laughs> but, it, but it was just like oh my gosh it was great and we had a good time all right so when's your next trip back um we're going back to anaheim in 10 months <laughs> okay so so yeah and and you know we have some um it is for us i would um personally i i love disney world but we've, we've had some real difficult situations with, well, I mean, that was Ashlyn flew lots and then COVID no flying. And then this was her first flight. Um, we've just had really, it's very concerning with her on an airplane. Um, it just a lot of different reasons, but it was, it went fine. Um, but it was enough to make me be like, 
I don't need to fly with her again. <laughs> like, okay. because if she melts down, it's, it's bad. It's like, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and so um, there's that. And if there's, you know, I've been on tarmacs where, you know, they don't try to have the air conditioning on and that's a, mm-hmm. that's a medical problem for us. And so, so we're just, so we're, so we're going to just drive and it's just, it's just, and she's got so much stuff. I have to, I have to bring a, she has to sleep in a special bed. She has to have a special stroller. That's huge. She has, you know, she's just got a lot of um, stuff that we have to bring and all that stuff. You know, we had to fly all that to Orlando and this time we just throw it in our car. So, so, um, and I told my husband, I was like, I think we can drive to Orlando. We live in Vancouver, Washington, which is like outside of Portland. And he was like, I don't think you can. And I was like, no, I think I can. It was worth it. It'll be worth it. But we don't, we're, we're still in discussion on that because uh, I want to go back. And we probably will just fly her again. But, you know, every single time we get her on a plane, it's just a lot of, a lot of factors. And um, she won't wear a mask. So that's a factor with her because, um, you know, beyond COVID, there's just a lot of germs out there that she can't get. And so, um, so anyway, so yeah, so we're going back in, in March. We already have our reservations. <laughs> we're going to, to That's Disney. happy. That's happy. And so yeah. let me ask you that in Anaheim with the whole troop, will you stay on property or off? I don't know yet. Okay. I, I don't know. The Anaheim one is hard because we have free. We usually do still stay at, on property. We have in the past, but we have, um, we can stay at a uh, timeshare for free. Oh, free and is so a good price. Yeah. It's a good price yeah. when you've got a lot of things to consider and with, you know. And as we've discussed on this podcast before, yeah. staying on property is less critical at Disneyland than it is. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. So, so it depends. So if, if we can get that um, free, then we will probably stay off site. But if we have to pay anything, we will just stay on property because I just, it just works better. But, um, but yeah, so that's our next trip. Well, are you going to go just you guys or will you take mom with you? I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if she wants to go. (laughs) She's like, we need a whole episode. I'm good. I'm good. Mom's like, we need a whole episode on what it's like to be grandma. (laughs) And she, she loved it, but it's, you know, it's a lot. And it's a lot with five children. Yeah. Fairly young children. And so, and then with Ashlyn and, um, but yeah, so I don't, I haven't asked her yet. <laughs> give her low, go give her me. four months. We'll go do a girl's <laughs> trip. Tell your mom. Tell you. Yeah, okay. It'll be, a, <laughs> it'll be totally different. Yeah, I didn't I, want to go anyway. I'm inviting you. You don't do it. <laughs> you go when you want. Okay, I'll go at the same time and just walk by you. Pretend like I don't know you. <laughs> do you have, Stace, any like, word of wisdom in a sentence that you can tell a mom who's concerned about taking her child with special needs to a Disney park? Um, I think you, you just have to go. And I say that with extreme caution because there is so much that can go wrong, but I think what I found that, that did go right was the way that they took care of us and it wasn't anything special about us it was just very easy for us to get to das a das pass no questions it was um you know we were aware and i'm assuming most people know how a das it works very similar to the um genie plus is that what that's the fast pass is called now i think yeah um it and so it you know, we were aware if we went in line within that hour and it was long, we just waited and we would, you know, we're trying to be aware of that because we can't, she cannot wait in line at all. Um, she can't sweat at all. And so, um, but I felt like the characters, the, all of the staff, they made it easy for us on our trip and that made it doable and I would do it again. Um, and so it, it, you have to, I mean, you're always cautious and you're always thinking, but I felt like I, I don't fight for her inclusion. We, like I said before, we just walk if we're not included with, you know, a smile on our face, but it was a place that we could go without having to fight and everything was taken care of. 
And we did not experience that at other parks. And it was just something that I felt, even though it still took a lot of effort and I was, I was nervous about flying her there. I was nervous about so many things. It almost felt like we had a break from her diagnosis. And so that's what, that's what I would say that, I mean, you can't expect that of course, which most parents of kids with special needs don't have a lot of expectations <laughs> because we live day in and day out on survival mode. <laughs> and so, um, but it was just really nice. I really, really loved it. So yeah. That's awesome. I am pro Disney. If I wasn't before, which I was, I know I thought I was before now I am like really pro Disney. <laughs> so. Of all the people I know for this to have happened to, I mean, <laughs> Come on, Stacy <laughs> is the mom that is going to take care of all of this for sure. Well, now I am so happy that you came on to share this. And I'm so interested to hear what our community thinks and to see if they have any questions. And I know that you're part of our community on the, I'm mm-hmm. um, doing, Di- or I can't even talk. Dueling Dizzy Community Duelist there, our Facebook right. page. Um, <laughs> yes. So I know that if anybody has questions, they can just put it right there on our Facebook group page and you'll be right there to answer. Um, I'd love to hear uh, from our listeners to hear if they've ever done something similar to this as well. So uh, we want to hear from you. We are on YouTube. So if you're watching us, you already know this. This Um, is us. This is us. Um, so, Hey, after you watch on YouTube, please comment or, um, leave a review somewhere. We would love it. Um, you can also find our show notes at duelingdisney.com. We're all over Facebook, Insta, and Twitter at dueling Disney, or you can hashtag dueling Disney, and we will see what you have to share. Um, I'm just going to put another plug in, share a review that really helps us out. So whether you are on Stitcher or Spotify or Apple or YouTube or I don't know, your mom's old transistor radio. I have no idea. Can you leave a review there? I don't know. Um, Anyway, if you can, (laughs) we would really appreciate it. So thank you. And thank you, Stacey, so much for coming on today. Yeah, it was great. Please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened. Wait for the podcast to come to a complete stop before disembarking. Pemene se centavos, por favor.